The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. You're tuned to Grace in Focus, the radio ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. In Romans chapter 11, Paul mentions Gentiles, how they are the beneficiaries of the Jews' stumbling. Paul talks about the riches offered to the Gentiles. What are these riches? Well, stay tuned and we'll talk about it. This is the Grace Evangelical Society, and you can find out more about us by going to our website at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We have hundreds of articles, blogs, and videos, and podcasts, ebooks, and our bi monthly magazine, Grace in Focus. Find out more about it all at faithalone.org. Now, with today's discussion from Romans 11, here are Catherine Wright and Ken Yates. We are continuing our study through the book of Romans, and we are in Romans 11, which deals with the future of the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Catherine reminded me of a conference that GES had on the book of Romans. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, our organization does a national conference every year. This year coming up, we have one on first Peter, which we're very excited about. And it's first and second Peter. It's first and second Peter. That's right. But we did one a few years ago on the book of Romans. I remember there was a speaker. I'll be honest, I don't remember which speaker it was, but I thought this was a good summary. You know, as we've been going through this series in Romans, there's a lot of really deep, that makes your head hurt kind of stuff. And I like simple summary statements like these because it helps me wrap my brain around it. And so coming into this section in Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul is speaking about the nation of Israel. And the speaker kind of summarized it by saying, if you look at chapter nine, that is looking at Israel's past, what the Lord has done for them. And chapter 10 is looking at the present as Paul is dealing with the nation at his time. And then now into chapter 11, we are looking at the future of Israel, which is the big question of what is God going to do with them? You know, is he done with the nation of Israel? And as we've been arguing through this series is that, no, he's not done. He is going to fulfill his promises to the nation of Israel. He is not done with them. The church has not replaced Israel. And here we see the ultimate fulfillment of those promises in this last section of 9, 10, and 11. So I like good summaries like that. It helps me when we get into the nitty gritty. So I hope that helps you because it helped me. (laughs) And that's also a plug for the National Conference. Just think if you'd have been there on the Romans, you would have heard that. And if you come to this one and it's in May, and by the way, you can go on the GES website and Mm -hmm. get all the info and lodging information and eating information. That's right. We're staying at Camp Copus, which is a beautiful retreat center. And it's really good for the kids. It is. Lots of activities for Mm -hmm. the kids. It's on a lake. It's really beautiful. And When you were talking about that summary, it takes a gift. Whoever that speaker was, it reminds me of when I went to seminary, Charles Ryrie was just leaving. Mm -hmm. And they said that that was his gift, that he had a way to like summarize it or put it in an outline. What you just did for Romans 9, 10, 11, Israel's past, Israel's present, and Israel's future, mm-hmm. chapters 9, 10, 11. So that's very helpful. Mm-hmm. I thought so. As we talk about the nation of Israel, you also have a quote from an unbelieving yeah. Jewish commentator. And why don't you share it with our If you've been following with our series, we've been trying to emphasize the fact that the Lord is not done with the nation of Israel. And, you know, right now, as we sit here, Israel's in the news once again, and we're seeing so much devastation and and warfare. And a lot of the political commentators are saying Israel's going to be wiped out, that there's no way that they can withstand what's happening. But we we would say we can be very confident in the fact that that's not true because the Lord is going to be faithful and fulfill. He still has a future. They're not going to be wiped mm -hmm. out. That's exactly right. There is a quote from a, well, he's now passed, but um, a commentator, Charles Krauthammer. He was a Jew. He was a Jew, Mm -hmm. but from what I could tell, he was what we would call a secular Jew, like a a philosophical Jew, uh, from what I understood about his life. Yes. And he made just a really great observation about Israel. And he said, Israel is the very embodiment of Jewish continuity. 
It is the only nation on earth that inhabits the same land, bears the same name, speaks the same language, and worships the same God that it did 3,000 years ago. Yeah. And I just think that's what we, you know, it's just such an, you know, I, there's another quote, and I don't know who said it, but there was somebody asked, what's the greatest evidence that there is a God or that the God of the Bible is true? And the answer was Israel. The nation of Israel. The nation. That's not a coincidence mm -hmm. that this is the only nation on earth like this, mm -hmm. you know, and they're so still standing. They're still there despite all the attempts to wipe them out through the centuries. They still are there. And Paul would certainly agree with that mm -hmm. as we're going through this study in the book of Romans, particularly this section. And here in Romans 11, as we saw in our last episode, Paul said in verse 11 of Romans 11, that even though they've stumbled, and what he means by that is they are a nation, as a corporate nation, they are a nation in unbelief, as they are still today, mm -hmm. but they have not fallen. They have not completely fallen away in the sense that God is done with them. But instead, now salvation has gone out to the Gentiles, and salvation in its fullest meaning, not just eternal life, not just being declared righteous by God through faith in Jesus Christ, but also salvation from the power of sin. This is all available now to the Gentiles. And, and Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, proclaimed that message mm -hmm. everywhere he went. And then he takes up in verse 12, and he says, now, if their fall, talking about the fall of Israel in the sense that they have fallen into unbelief, that they have rejected both Christ's message. We'd even go back to John the Baptist message to the nation and in, in the gospels and Paul's message as he would go around the world, the Roman world preaching in synagogues, mm. he found opposition by and large from the Jews. And then he would go to the Gentiles. He goes, now, if their fall is riches for their world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, we need to talk about what that means, the riches. What does Paul mean by riches? Now, certainly it would include that Gentiles can believe in Jesus Christ. Gentiles are now a part of the church. Gentiles are now a part of the body of Christ, which is a major theme in the book of Ephesians. But the riches here is more than, well, now Gentiles can be saved. Because as you mentioned in our last episode, Gentiles could be eternally saved in the Old Testament. Yeah. And so the riches here that Paul is talking about is more than that. As fellow members of the body that God is now working in the world in the church, what riches have been offered to the Gentiles because of the rejection of this message by the Jewish nation? And in the book of Romans, that would be freedom from the power of sin, the spirit. walking according to the spirit, mm -hmm. Romans 8, the production of spiritual fruit mm -hmm. that is not available by a legalistic keeping of the law. Mm -hmm. So what Catherine and I are saying is the riches here includes all of this. And these things are now being offered to the Gentile world. And then Paul says, if that's true, and obviously it is, the if there in verse 12, now if their fall is riches for the Gentiles, another way of saying that is since. Since their fall is riches, assumed to be true, and it is true, how much more their fullness? When the nation of Israel comes around, and as Catherine said, if, if we're talking about here in Romans 11, the future of the nation of Israel if their failure mm. resulted in this, as God's chosen people, what is it going to be when they believe and when they call upon the Lord? What will that mean for the world? And obviously, if we see the riches here due to Israel's failure, so much greater is it going to be in the future when they as a nation believe and call upon their king. Mm hmm Right. As, as God's chosen people. For us, we're talking to about 
a time in which the Lord will return and the nation will get there. You know, we're, we're heading that way here in 11, but that uh, the millennial kingdom will, will be established and the whole world will be centered around Israel. In Romans 8, Paul talks about all of creation groaning mm. and waiting for the coming kingdom. Well, what Paul is arguing here in 9, 10, and 11 is that Israel is a central part yeah. of that kingdom. And so what is it going to be like when the kingdom comes and Israel assumes their proper role mm. or the role that God said they would always have in that kingdom? What's that going to be like for all of creation? And again, in Romans 8, Paul talks about the creation groaning, looking forward to this day. But now Paul is talking about Israel's role in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's funny talking about this because, as I mentioned, I've been working in Isaiah and talk about interpretation issues that when you look in Isaiah 1, it talks about Jerusalem. It talks about how the city has become, he describes it like a harlot. It's this adulterous prostitute, basically. But then in that same section where he is talking about how they've rebelled against God, and this is an Isaiah's day, you know, Paul's speaking years later, different day, same problem, but they're rebellious and they've fallen into idolatry and they're just this evil, stiff-necked people. But Isaiah prophesies and he says, there's going to come a day when Jerusalem will be called the holy city. It's the same thing, right? It's the same promise that Isaiah proclaimed in his day that Paul's basically going to be saying here that, again, God is not done with them. And, you know, you really got to step back here, or we should step back here and contemplate the historical background here. Yeah. When you look at Israel in Paul's day, mm -hmm. they had rejected John and they had killed the Christ. They are persecuting Paul as the, the apostle to the Gentiles, but he speaks of this glorious future the fullness that's going to be when Israel as a nation believes. Mm. And again, if we could apply it to the contemporary scene today, when we look at what's going on in the Middle East and Israel is surrounded and even still they are a nation of unbelief, this is the glorious future that Paul sees. Mm -hmm. Such is the power of God's word, such is his promise. And as we apply it to us, think of the promises that he's made to us as believers, not only of eternal life, but that if we're faithful to him, he's going to reward us, that this kingdom is coming and we're going to be a part of it forever. Mm -hmm. So Paul is a, a man with a vision mm -hmm. as he looks forward to the future of the nation of Israel. We hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. And remember, until we meet again, keep grace, keep grace in, in focus. focus. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials. That's faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, how should the church view the Jews today? Please join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.